For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and welcome to HetNet Happenings, where we take a look at all things DAS, Wi-Fi, small cell, and much more. All right, well, welcome back to HetNet Happenings. Uh, we were on the road last week up at the Small Cells Americas event held in Dallas and put on by the Small Cell Forum. This is a very active trade group that, like the name implies, deals exclusively with small cells. And that runs the gamut from trying to influence regulatory policy in the U.S. and abroad and even matching vendors with carriers and other suppliers to make sure that the actual needs of everybody in the equation are met on a deployment basis. While we were at the show, I had the opportunity to catch up with Alan Law, who is the chairman of the Small Cell Forum, and we're going to play that clip for you. Alan's going to give us a bit of an overview of some of the operative topics at the show, and what really stands out about this is the Small Cell Forum's forecast for enterprise adoption of small cells. According to them, on a go-forward basis, small cells are going to be a very integral part of the access technology that enterprises use to ensure connectivity, capacity coverage where it's needed for their employees. So essentially what Alan's going to go over is how 2015 was the year that small cells moved from sort of the how phase, asking, I'm sorry, the why phase, asking why do we need small cells? into the how phase. How can we deploy these small cells more effect effectively? So let's take a look at this uh, conversation with Alan Law, chairman of the Small Cell Forum. My name's Alan Law. I'm chair of the Small Cell Forum. Uh, I'm here at uh, Small Cells Americas here in Dallas. A really great event, packed event, um, and it's really been fascinating, some of the comments that are, are being discussed. I'd say in terms of the key trends that I've seen, Lots of discussions about uh, really the HetNet, how do you make the HetNet really work. Uh, some great discussions on, on really the, you know, the how of small cells, not the why anymore, but just very much the how and how you really dimension and a fascinating presentation from Reliance, looking at deploying tremendous numbers of small cells and how you do that. And really the hub to doing that is automating that process beyond self-organizing the network, but including every aspect of workflow management to really drive scale. In terms of looking at how you really scale for small cell and enterprise, I think you know, some of the, the good news that, that's really come out from the recent forecasts that we've released as part of our Crossing the Chasm report, which includes numbers from mobile experts, is we've seen you're looking at enterprise numbers growing by 110% this year. And one of the fascinating numbers is, is when you actually reach 2020, we anticipate there'll be seven times the number of small cells than, than macro cells. So it's really coming down to, to how you do that and how you do that in that simple way. You're right, there's a lot of different challenges in, in, in how you approach that uh, to get to there. And what we're working very hard at in the Small Cell Forum is continuing to evolve uh, effectively the SON and the HetNet techniques that enable you to do that. And we're also working very much on, on neutral host and how you extend that capability to open up an entire new set of the market. And one of the figures that came out, which was by 2020, only 20% of the deployments will have been, you could have said, led installations by MNOs. And so 80% will have been deployed by other people and then looking to connect those to networks to provide service. So a, a fascinating time. And we're working very much within the forum across our six main uh, work plan activities to actually drive and deliver on that. So, so please join us if you're not a member. I'd say it's this year, actually. I mean, and that was the, our, announce, our previous announcement six months ago when they showed the numbers was very much about we're on the hockey stick. So it's been very much, you know, uh, are we nearly there yet? I think was a phrase somebody used in relation to one of the movies, in particularly with small cells. Uh, we're really pleased that, you know, when we're looking at the mobile experts forecast, it, it's grown on the previous forecast. It's very much in line with the trajectory, which is showing that that growth is here and here and now, and that growth will continue to, to expand as we move forward. So I'd say we're, very, we're, we're there now, and we're there with the products that we've got, which are good for where we are, and what we're doing right now is really making sure that the small cell technology evolves and meets the future needs, so how you bring in virtualization in the right way that opens up even more opportunities and will drive even greater additional scale. So 
the question was very much around DAS and small cell and how do they come together. And, and for me, this is, uh, you're right, it's a very key point and it's quite an exciting time in that space, particularly when you look at virtualization. So as you virtualize your small cell, you, you split it in essence to a physical component and a virtualized network function component. And as you do the same thing with your DAS, uh, if you're looking to have a virtualized RAN and you do that same split, then the physical network function starts to really converge and look very similar. And, you know, and then you, when you have a virtualized platform, that's, you know, that's independent really to how you actually deliver the service. So I think one of the exciting evolutions that, that's being explored within the forum, which is really how do we bring the DAS and the small cell together particularly when you virtualize. You know, I think there's clearly be a role for both technologies um, and you know, operators will be looking to use the right one for the right environment. I'd say the really positive construct from my perspective is, is that especially when you move to virtualization, there's a clear harmonization that takes place and that's really exciting. You know, I think that there probably is a degree of education, you know, when you're trying to communicate your messages to people. I think that resonates with a lot of people within the industry already. There was, you know, for example, there was a hotel uh, networking group uh, here at this event, you know, very much looking at the, how they pre-install uh, sufficient cabling in infrastructure as it's being built that enables you to provide that high capacity, great small cell based experience within those properties as you move forward. So I think it is resonating with some. Uh, there are still many people that are not aware and you know and as a forum we'll continue to release documents that, that can be used to provide that insight and raise the profile and, and, and reach as we move out. And what's really fascinating is it's not always easy as well when you're looking at connectivity to always be sure that you've got the fixed connectivity but there are some wireless based products that can mesh and integrate now as well with small cells that allow you to do that even if there's not existing fixed infrastructure to, you, to leverage. Uh, when you're looking to deploy. So in terms of the immediate releases uh, that we're working towards, uh, we'll be talking about monetization within enterprise. So, you know, tremendous growth we've achieved already this year and there's projected going forward within the enterprise sector. Uh, we're very much exploring what we've learned and how things can develop and open up many more new opportunities within that space. And so that we're looking to release that at Mobile World Congress. So that'll form part of a release there. And then we've got a, a bunch of other activities that are very much all around, you know, what do we do with the headnet, what we're doing with uh, license exempt, uh, as well as the virtualization and the neutral host and pulling that material together to really give that concrete picture of how you deliver an integrated headnet, which will form the basis of our next major release that we intend to provide and in the small cell uh, uh, world series that takes place in London next year in May. So Alan laid out a lot of the opportunities and challenges associated with small cell deployment and uh, the challenges, you know, they're very real. You need to scale a process that is inherently difficult to scale. So you need a deployment strategy that you can apply the exact same way to 20,000, 30,000 small cells, despite the fact that each site comes with its own set of planning and zoning regulations with its own unique challenges as they relate to power and backhaul access. There's even a lot of workforce challenges out there in terms of uh, do we have the, the right number of uh, people in the right places around the country and around the world to facilitate these rollouts and install these things correctly, quickly, and in a way that won't require someone to come back and look at them again. Now, these are all issues that uh, different groups are working on. One of those groups is PCIA, the Wireless Infrastructure Association. Our regular viewers will remember a couple weeks ago, we were out in Los Angeles bringing you coverage of PCI's HetNet Expo. So following that event, there was a uh, working group meeting about small cells. One of the people that took part in that is Jake McLeod, who's an analyst and founder at Graybeards Consulting, and a very well-known personality in the telecom industry. So Jake is taking part in these working groups, and what they've done is identified five areas that need uh, just joint collaborative work to make these uh, lend themselves better to the ambitions of the small cell industry. So let's hear from Jake on what those five working groups hope to address. Sure, the, the uh, meeting with the ITC the, uh, was designed to explore and do a deep dive on the cost elements 
that are prohibiting or being a major hurdle to the deployment of small cell. And uh, so we looked at several different cost elements, a total of 10 of them, and then discussed them and debated them and it determined which of the elements would be appropriate for the ITC uh, Innovation Technology Council to explore and do a deep dive to see if they, we couldn't come up with some solutions. So out of those 10 areas, of those 10 cost elements in the equation, uh, we decided to focus on five. And uh, there's a lot of overlap there, but one of them is an educational issue. So we established a working group uh, called the CIO Economic Development Working Group and the chair is Chris Fisher, Fisher. And what, what that working group is designed to do is to coordinate with the wireless CIO industry. Because the CIOs are gonna to have to contribute to this and, and understand what a small cell is. Uh, it's not a macro cell. And that's basically the problem right now in the metropolitan areas and with zoning and planning, they all look at this as a macro cell, and it's not, and they, they overlay the planning and zoning and permitting costs uh, as if it was a macro cell. So, uh, education of the CIO community uh, of the metropolitan areas and the, the, the uh, state and local people is going to be critical. So we have a group that is going to meet with that CIO association and begin a dialogue there. The second group is called the Pole Attachment and Local Zoning Group, headed up by Jim Lockwood, an outstanding guy. And uh, basically, the permitting and zoning is so onerous uh, and costly with regard to schedule and cost. Uh, it, it, and it's solely because the metropolitan boards are looking at this like a macro cell. It's not a macro cell and we have to show them and, and offer model ordinances for, that will accelerate the zoning and planning processes. The next group is the DAS and small cell definition group. They're going to actually define the equipment and the physical properties of various small cells that are offered in the market. And this will be fundamental, a fundamental group that will be uh, the results of which will be used by the other groups, like the CIO group. In order to tell the CIOs what is a small cell, well, here, here's a small cell. This is what it is. Here are the power requirements. This is the size of X manufacturer, Y manufacturer, Z man. And here's the roadmap. They're getting smaller and smaller. So as CIO, as you can see, it, it's no big deal, I mean, physically. Uh, the same is true with the zoning and planning boards. So this group is going to define what a small cell is so they can be used in the other groups. The third working group, or the fourth working group is, uh, let's see, it's, it's a training working group. Uh, excuse me, that's, yeah, the training. It's headed up by uh, Professor Rinkin Thacker from from uh, University of Maryland. And we're looking at the, the needs for professional people in the future. What curricula will be required, uh, what skill sets will be required for the technicians in the future. Tower climbers are important, but with fiber going to the top of the tower now, it's gonna be ultimately important for these guys to increase their skill sets so they can actually work on the optoelectronics at the top of the tower or on top of a building. And so the skill sets are going to be, uh, have to be elevated. And so this working group is designed to help develop the curriculum that will uh, train our future uh, workforce. The last working group that was formed is an architectural recommendation for, recommendations for indoor DAS. And that's, uh, PCIA already has a working group on that, but that is such a critical item 
that Tracy Ford is heading it up and is going to be our liaison between the ITC and the PCIA working group. And uh, so <clears throat> we're going to coordinate efforts there so we don't have to duplicate efforts and there won't be any overlap. So those are the five working groups that we've established. And uh, we hope to have a readout on the working groups in May of 2016 at the annual conference. So we'll have our first uh, chairman's uh, conference call uh, this week. And so uh, we'll get that kicked off. That's correct. That, that's the problem. That is a, a very significant problem in that there's no uniformity to the zoning and planning processes. So you have to understand the local processes. And so one of the, we're going to look at that very deeply, and I don't. Hopefully, we can address the issue with some uh, model ordinances uh, that would be applicable to small cell. You know, uh, one of the uh, carriers suggested that small cell should only require an electrical permit. Period. Full stop. Makes sense. It's you know, it's no bigger than a signage on the front of Joe's shoe repair shop and all you need there is an electrical permit so but again the perspective of the local zoning and permitting bodies think this is a cell site at a macro cell and it's not so it we have to educate them and then offer some uh, model ordinances possibly. I'm not sure what the working group's going to come up with, but I would assume something like that. Well, it's up to the OEMs to make it simple, you know, plug and play. But uh, most of the time it comes out of the box as plug and pray. You know, you, you hope it works. So if you've got a guy on the top of a tower and he's praying that this thing's going to work, it'd, be, it'd help if he had some additional skill sets. Uh, with regard to fiber connectivity, with regard to, you know, uh, looking at the, the output of a test set and understanding what that means and what remediation is required to make it work. All right, well, that was just a brief look at some of the uh, events that took place up at the Small Cells America show in Dallas. We've got a lot more video content up on the RCR Wireless News YouTube channel that I'd encourage you to take a look at. We also provide fairly comprehensive coverage of the event, which you can find on rcrwireless.com. You know, while you're on the website, maybe take a minute uh, and subscribe to our daily news blast that'll bring the latest and greatest telecom and ICT headlines right to your inbox. Like I mentioned earlier, the RCR Wireless News YouTube channel has lots of great multimedia content, as does the RCR TV website, where you can find episodes of HetNet Happenings that you might need to catch up with. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll see you next week. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.